It's now a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce Governor Stanley Fisher. As Governor of the Bank of Israel, he's obviously an ideal expert to speak on us on the topic, the role of a central bank in a financial crisis. But Stanley Fisher, however, is also a highly distinguished economist who has published on a very wide range of topics in macroeconomics. He's also author of two of very widely distributed textbooks in macroeconomics. He was for a long time professor, and Ken Rogoff already mentioned that, professor of economics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology from 1977 till 1999. And during this time, he was on leave for the World Bank, and especially as first deputy managing director in the IMF. During that time, in the end of the 90s, he experienced obviously a number of financial crises in emerging markets. Afterwards, he became uh, vice chairman of uh, Citigroup before joining then the Bank of Israel. Governor Fisher, we are very much looking forward to your talk, and we are very much appreciating that you could come and talk to us. Thank you. Uh, Ken uh, Rogoff, uh, Chairman uh, Joe Ackerman, Professor Ray, Professor Waltz, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I greatly appreciate the honor of having been asked to speak uh, on this occasion, honoring uh, Ken Rogoff. It's true uh, I was one of the people who signed uh, Ken's thesis. But he is an example of uh, a law of theses uh, that I claim some credit for, which is that the more work I do, did on a thesis, the worse the thesis. Uh, this is a statement about equilibrium conditions, not about a partial derivative. Uh, and uh, Ken's didn't require uh, any input uh, from me. Uh, he did leave uh, prematurely. His thesis would have been much more impre impressive if he'd uh, waited a year more. And uh, I leave it to you to figure out uh, how much better an economist he would have been if he'd waited an extra year uh, at MIT. Um, this prize has been awarded four times, and the awardees uh, whose names we've heard, Eugene Farmer, Michael Woodford, Bob Schiller, and now Ken, are an extremely distinguished group, uh, one uh, which I particularly uh, respect since three out of the four are MIT PhDs. Uh, I don't want to describe, uh, again, Ken's contributions uh, to economics. They're well known. He's contributed to almost every part of macroeconomics that is relevant at any time uh, to ongoing discussions about uh, policy issues. And through his uh, textbook, uh, through his editing of the third volume of the Handbook of International, Econi uh, of International Economics, and of course, most recently, through his and Carmen Reinhardt's uh, already classic book, This Time is Different, uh, eight centuries of financial folly, he has contributed to uh, the education of all of us, and he has contributed no less to uh, the policy debates uh, of current times, and he has contributed to all of us who want to understand the dynamics of recent and current uh, debt problems. By the way, Ken, there's another book waiting to be written with a related title, relates to what I hear in each country I go to. Here it's different, which is translated as the laws of economics work differently among us than they do uh, elsewhere, and this is a very widespread uh, belief. Um, I just want to relate to three papers of Ken's written in the 1980s, that is within the first decade 
after he uh, left uh, graduate school. Um, there is the random walk of exchange rates uh, paper with uh, Macy and uh, subsequent reports on that result, which has been extraordinarily robust. There is his famous paper on the conservative central banker, 1985, which uh, strikes a chord. Some papers just smell like they're right, and that one you realize it's right. And his 1988 paper with Jeremy Bulow on uh, multiple, multilateral negotiations for rescheduling developing country debt, each of these a topic uh, to which uh, he has returned profitably over the course of time. Uh, to have had three hits in uh, 10 years is quite an achievement, and there have been many more uh, since. And they're not all, uh, I'll describe in a minute what I expect from a Ken paper, but they're not all full of uh, only interesting and important uh, findings. There are also, he, Ken is perfectly willing to uh, reiterate the uh, lessons that people keep forgetting. I happened to, in preparing for this, to read a paper of his, Fiscal Conservatism, Exchange Rate Flexibility and the Next Generation of Debt Crises, uh, which was written in 2005, and I want to quote a few lines. Uh, when it comes to avoiding international debt crises, the single best precaution any middle-income country can take is to keep down its debt-to-GDP ratios, especially public debt, and especially public external debt. The second most important step is to adopt a sufficiently flexible exchange rate regime. And of course, those results continue to be absolutely true. And if you're going to give countries advice, you might well start uh, with those. And if they can absorb those, they'll have gone most of the way. Since to keep your debt ratio down, you've got to keep your deficit ratio down. You'll have gone most of the way to being able to run a sustainable set of policies. And a second line, which I noticed just in passing, the real reason China should move now toward a more flexible exchange rate sooner rather than later is that exit from a fixed rate is far easier when the pressures are for appreciation. And bear that in mind. Uh, just wait a couple of years. Uh, I said I'd comment on what to expect from a Rogoff paper. I think Elaine said that already, but uh, let me mention it. The paper will be interesting, for sure. It will be on an important topic. It will be absolutely lucid. And it will have clear and strong conclusions, quite often uh, with some surprises which seem non-intuitive when you hear them the first time and completely intuitive after you thought about them for a couple of hours. In addition, I had the pleasure of working for only a month, uh, it was, uh, with Ken when he was economic counselor at the fund. All the properties of his papers were evident in discussions with him, as were his insights, his courtesy, his firmness, and always arguments backed up by serious thinking and by a willingness to engage those with whom he disagreed. Well, I won't go on praising Ken and his work, but I could. It's very easy. Rather, I'll turn now to central banking, with the operative question being, what will it look like after the lessons of the crisis of 2007 through, 2000, through 201X? is over. We don't know when this crisis, uh, when this series of crises uh, will end, and that is a sobering uh, thought. I will not be focusing, uh, despite the title, only on the role of the central bank in a financial crisis, but a 